morning. Welcome everyone to the Maryville Fallowfield Pastoral Charge. We hope that you are enjoying our spring weather and we thank you for taking time out to join us for worship. If you are looking for a pastoral charge that promotes God's radical love and inclusion, you have certainly come to the right worship. Our doors and our worship are open to everyone. So whoever you are and wherever you are on your journey of faith, welcome. Welcome to our virtual service. We are grateful to be able to meet in person and are worshiping today at Maryville. Next Sunday, May 1st, we will be at Fallowfield United. You can find a list of our services on our website. A big thank you to all who helped with our Easter services. Your commitment to our pastoral charge is very much appreciated. There are many organizations in need of donations now more than ever. The Elizabeth Fry Society, Center 507 and Ottawa Mission are just a few that need your generosity during these difficult times. You can find a list of these community services and more on our website. If you would like to donate to the church, you can do so online by e-transfer to muchurchatbelnet.ca or you can send a check to either Maryville or Fallowfield Church. You can find each address on our website, www.maryvellefallowfield.org. These are all the announcements we have at this time, and so now we hope that you will sit back and relax and hear God speak to you through music, prayer, or reflection. Thank you. Let this sacred candle be a light for us as we travel on our faith journey. Let this sacred candle be a light for our inner life. Let this sacred candle be the light of Christ for the world. Praise be to Christ. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, as we gather today, may your presence be felt among us. Today, remind us how you walked alongside Jesus and his disciples faithfully and through all of their challenges. Let us rejoice in how you travel alongside us each and every day. As we worship today, may joy fill our thoughts and our hearts and help us to live full, faith-filled lives that remind us of your love and of all the good around us. May we always be grateful that you call us into relationship with one another and with you. And hear us now, O oh God, as we say the prayer Jesus taught our ancestors in the faith. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 to 37. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Herein lies wisdom.
Our next reading is from John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Jesus appears to the disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Herein lies good news.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be aligned with your love, O God. Amen. Today we are reminded that during the remaining days of Easter, we are still proclaiming together that Christ is risen. And we rejoice in the amazing good news that we belong to a God who calls us by name and calls us through the ongoing resurrection. We are reminded that the resurrection story gives us new life, not just once, but over and over again. A friend once said to me that our Easter truth is not that we will be born again someday in a faraway galaxy, but that we are to be alive here and now by the power of the Easter story. And the Easter story calls us to embrace the present moment. As we journey together through this Easter season, we will hear again and again how the idea of resurrection is alive here and now, each and every day. And so we claim the idea of resurrection as something that is ongoing. And not only that, but it happens in very unexpected ways. In one story, Mary Magdalene is the first to encounter Jesus in the garden, thinking he was a gardener. And when she hears the voice of Jesus, she immediately has an awakening. And she realizes the beginning is in the end. And something ceases to be, but a new thing emerges. Last week, we read Luke's account of how the women gathered at the tomb and experienced a very different resurrection awakening. And our story today shares with us that the disciples encountered Jesus when they are hiding in a room in fear for their lives. And when they experience the spirit of Jesus with them, they too have a different insight into the resurrection. Thomas, who was out of the room when Jesus showed up, meets Jesus in his moment of doubt, grief, and unbelief. And he has a breakthrough in realizing that his relationship with Jesus is not over. It is just beginning. And one of our Easter stories reveals how two heavy-hearted disciples meet the risen Christ and have their eyes opened wide. Over and over we will hear the stories of our spiritual ancestors who have resurrection encounters with not only Jesus, but with other people as well. And what these different encounter stories tell us is that the resurrection of Jesus was not a one-size-fits-all experience. I believe that in these stories of first century Christians, there are truths that speak in a very particular way to us as 21st century people of faith. If we take a good look at these stories, we will notice that they most often occur in community, in communion with God and with each other. And it is in and through community that we are given the grace to recognize the resurrection. Mary, upon seeing the empty tomb, immediately runs to the community of disciples to tell them about Jesus, and they in turn all run to see what is going on. When the disciples leave the tomb, Mary is then joined by Jesus and the two angels. The resurrection takes place in sacred community. Last week, when the women in our story went to the tomb, they went together as a group, sharing their grief with one another. And they too have angels join in their community as well. In our story today, the disciples are found hiding together, trying to make sense of it all. And how did they do that? They have gathered in community. And even Thomas joins the community to hear the news about the risen Christ. The other resurrection stories, they all take place in community as well. This says to me that our resurrection moments, or what Oprah calls her aha moments, often come to us through other sources. Jesus knew one size doesn't fit all when it comes to faith. And so he gives us those aha moments when we are engaged with others. 
And often these moments come when we interact with those outside of our own community. Take a trip to another country and you come back a changed person. Read a good book and you will look at the world through a new lens. Talk with a stranger in an elevator or in line at a grocery store or even in an Uber car and your world will open up. All resurrection stories have the power to help us grow in our humanity. You know, every Friday uh, at our pastoral charge, we have a meditation group, and we often read Buddhist authors and other authors, authors from other faith traditions as well as secular authors. And I believe as a group, we have grown as a sacred community that experiences resurrection as an ongoing blessing. Resurrection is anything that helps you change and open up and see the world in a different way. Jesus encourages us to expand our horizons to every part of the world and everybody in it. Jesus came to Mary, the women, the disciples, Thomas, and the two on the road, not looking at all like they expected he would. In the resurrection stories, Jesus seems to acknowledge that we all come to God through our own stories and different stories, and that is why he came in many different ways. Jesus comes in a variety of ways during the Easter season, and we'll read many of these stories as we go along. And Jesus knew that we all experience God differently, and that we must embrace and celebrate our differences. If we open ourselves to the inclusiveness of Jesus, it will promote unity and help us turn the human race into the human family. I believe that opening ourselves to seeing Jesus in the other is embracing the early church tradition we inherit as Easter people. Reflecting on the themes in our Easter stories and reflecting on the theme of building community this Easter season calls us to be radically different disciples. And this Easter, we are called to have a new perspective on our faith. May God bless these very, very different resurrection stories to our hearts. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we have gathered on this second Sunday of Easter, and we have heard your word through song and reflection. For the blessing of this and the blessing learned from the teachings of Jesus, we thank you. We give you our praise and thanks, O Holy God, for all the gifts of love we have received from you and for your light revealed in Jesus Christ. We bless you for the wonders of creation the delights of human companionship, and the assurances of faith. 
may we always remember that we affirm your kingdom come on earth whenever we show kindness and compassion to another human being. And may Jesus' teachings always be our guide along our Easter journey to Pentecost. And as we leave here today, may we go forth with a renewed awareness of the importance of community to our spiritual, social, and cultural well-being. And now we offer up to you in a moment of silence the concerns we carry in our own heart. Let us hearken our hearts to your call, O God, and to your presence always. Amen. Go from this worship with joy and may God's spirit surround and uphold you this and every day. And may the love of Jesus guide you and may the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you always. Amen.